Okay, so the third part of the distributive property is pulling out the greatest common factor. This is actually going to be the rainbow property in reverse. We are going to start with a problem that has no parentheses, and we are going to create it with parentheses. So, let's start with an example. Three x plus twelve. Now, from working with the rainbow property, you know that there really has to be three things. Well, you need your parentheses, and there's going to be a plus sign for sure, so you can make those. You know that you need a number outside of the parentheses, and there will be two inside of the parentheses. The number outside of the parentheses is going to be your greatest common factor. So you're going to pull out the greatest common factor between 3x and 12, and that's going to go here. Right here, you're going to take whatever that first term is, in this case it's 3x, and divide it by the greatest common factor. And you're going to put what's left in that spot. In this spot, you're going to do the same thing with the second term. So you're going to take the second term divided by the greatest common factor, and that's going to go in that spot. Okay, you may want to pause the video now to get these notes written down. So, here, the greatest common factor of 3x and 12. The first thing I'm going to do is look and see if there's a variable in common. This one has an x, this one doesn't. So there's no variable in common to pull out. Now I look at the number. The greatest common factor of 3 and 12 is 3. So my greatest common factor is 3. So now I'm going to take 3x divided by 3, which the 3's will cancel, and give me just x. Next I will take 12 divided by 3, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So the rainbow property in reverse, I would go from here to here. 3 times x plus 4. And of course I can check my answer by distributing through and taking 3 times x, 3 times 4, and I would get 3x plus 12. Let's do another example. Six x y plus eight x. Let's set our stuff up. We know we're going to have parentheses in the addition sign. We know we need to put the greatest common factor here, and there will be two numbers here. So, what we're going to do first is pull out the greatest common factor of six and eight. Let's look first to see if they have a variable in common. They both have an x, so I know I can pull an x out. There's only one y, so I can't pull a y out of both of them. So I'm done with variables. Now I look at numbers. The greatest common factor of 6 and 8 is 2. Now, I need to take 6xy, my first term, divided by my greatest common factor. The x's will cancel, because you, when you have the same thing on top and bottom, you cancel. And 6 divided by 2 is 3, and I still have a y, so that's 3y. Over here, 8x divided by 2x. X's will cancel, so I have no variable. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So that would be the final answer for that one.